when the Umayyad dynasty conquered Spain, they developed naval hegemony in the Mediterranean until they were wiped out when the Umayyad lost the heartland of the Muslim world and an Umayyad government in exile was created in what was then considered the frontier, Spain, in 758. But then later on, what was a frontier would become very developed. This is a pattern of all civilizations. An analogy that one can give to Americans is when the founding fathers created the 13 colonies, what is now called California was a hinterland, a wilderness. But today, just 200 years or less than 150 years, California now is a very important cultural part of the United States. The same thing happened in Andalusia. Andalusia was a backwater area. But then Andalusia became a major center of civilization to the point that it rivaled Baghdad. And you have poets from Andalusia who wrote glowingly about their city. Why talk about the cities of Baghdad and others? We have it here. You see what I'm saying? So just like Californians, you see what I'm saying? Now they have Hollywood and all kinds of things. The same thing. I mean, that is what has, one has to take into account when you look at civilizations, how what was a backyard or backwater area becomes very much part of the mainstream and begin to have a lot of influence. And that is something we have to take into account when we look at Andalusian Spain, that here was a refuge for the surviving remnants of the Umayyad gradually becoming a major center of Islamic civilization. That's one point I want to leave you with. Second point I want to leave you with when we talk about Muslim Andalusia is the fact that in Andalusia, the Muslims were now able to create a showcase in the southern tip of Europe, a showcase which would impress many of the Europeans to the point that, as I said earlier, European kings and nobilities used to come to Andalusian Spain for medical treatment because they were very advanced in the use of herbs, in surgery, and in pharmacopoeia. And of course, they contributed a great deal to European knowledge of science. For many years, the Hanun of Ibn Sina was the textbooks in medical schools in Europe for over 300 years. And this was likely because of the influence that came out of this civilization. So the transaction flow between the Islamic world and the West was largely mediated through Andalusia. And of course, the poetry and the literary tradition of the West was very much influenced by some of the writings of these people from that part of the world. If you read some of the scholars like Gilson and others who have written about the Arab Muslim influence in Western intellectual thought, you will see ample evidence to show this. You read Ada Bosseman and others, they'll give you a lot of evidence to prove this in terms of the transaction flow and the influence from the Muslim world by way of Spain to the rest of Europe. And of course, the legacy of this civilization to the West is most evident in many of the words that are now part of the vocabulary in English, in Spanish, in Italian, and all the others. Now, of course, as a backlash, the Spaniards would like to wipe out, just like the Chinese today, if they get hold of Hong Kong and Singapore, they would like to synonize these parts of the world after they have been anglicized for several centuries. The same thing happened in Spain, to the point that many of the Muslims and the Jews were kicked out after Granada fell. Once Ferdinand and Isabel came to power, there was a purge and the Inquisition led to the exodus of many of these people. Many of them, of course, went underground. In the case of the Muslims, they played taqiyya, known to the Shiites. You know, you don't reveal your true identity. And of course, the Jews, 
the Moranos, they call them in the literature, also play taqiyya in terms of hiding their names and their identity to the point that they change their names. You find many of the Muslims who would change their names and you find remnants of that. The Jews uh, 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 who found themselves in this kind of situation, your name is Levi. So you will hide your name and you call yourself Ben Levi Days. So, I mean, you have Spanish who still have that name, Ben Levi Days. And, you know, and if you go to, I mean, and you have some of those Muslims, Arabs, who will change their names, they may call themselves Ben Medina. You see, like to keep Medina as a code name to show their Muslim names, or Gonzalez. I mean, you know, like, uh, you have this. Some of the scholars who are investigating this phenomena are now beginning to realize that this kind of uh, uh, passing you know, was taking place, changing your name so that you cannot be detected as member of the targeted group. And this happens in, in, in the history of Spain. This happened with civilizations when groups move into each other's territory. You have the convergence or co divergence of civilization. The third point I want to leave you with with regard to the Muslim presence in Andalusia is the fact that when we look at the Muslim presence in Andalusia, we have to recognize the fact that in Andalusia, the Muslims did not only build libraries where they store the collective wisdom and knowledge of humankind available to them, because they learn a lot from the Chinese. The prophet told them, go to China to learn knowledge. They got learned a lot from the Indians, because the Indians contributed to the what we now call the Arabic numerals. The zero came from India. And of course, that was also passed on to Europe because you cannot do long division with Latin numbers. So, I mean, you know, like that became very uh, important in terms of the development of mathematics. Now, the fourth point that needs to be emphasized here really is the fact that if you look at the transaction flow from Andalusia to the West, you will see that the writings of Ibn Rus, Ibn Khazim, Ibn Sina, and many others impacted in the understanding of Aristotle and Plato, in the understanding of medicine, in the understanding of chemistry, alchemy, and in the understanding of geometry, to the point that in the English language, we have words like chemistry coming from the, uh, the Muslim uh, world by way of Spain. We have words like logarithm from al khawarizmi you see, and many other words that one can identify in the English language. And of course, scholars have documented all this. All we have to do is go to the library, read these things, and they become part of our mental furniture.